Howdy all, this is HDL, and this is my Mac audio routing tutorial. I wanted to make this video because, in my opinion, this is the best way to do any kind of audio capture or routing on OS X, and I just wanted to share the information with others. So, first up, we're going to need some tools, audio hijack, and at least one audio routing utility. There are many of these available online, but I have experience with three of them myself. Soundflower, Sound Siphon, and Loopback. I'm just going to go ahead and use Loopback for the purposes of this video because that's what I normally use these days. So if you have Soundflower or Sound Siphon or some, one of the other many uh, routing utilities, you don't really have to do any kind of setup. You just need Audio Hijack to use them. But with Loopback, you do need to uh, do one quick thing. Uh, you just come here on the bottom left where it says new virtual device. You just click the plus sign and there you go. You make a new pass through device by uh, just doing that. And you really don't have to do anything else. I'm just going to get rid of that because I already have three of them and I just named them pass through one, two, and three. So we'll just go ahead and quit out of that. And then we'll go straight into audio hijack, which I already have running because I'm capturing my mic audio here. All right. But we're not going to worry about that setup right now. We're going to make a new one from scratch. So over here, we'll just click New Session, New Blank Session. And over here on the right side, we'll see our Sources and Output Options. Um, let's say you do live streaming and you want to capture your mic audio as well as your game audio. So you can start with mic, take Input Device and drag it onto the grid and just click that and choose your mic. So now this is telling Audio Hijack that this is what we're going to capture. This is our source. So we need to choose an output to send it to. Now those devices that we set up before, the pass-throughs, we're just going to go ahead and choose pass-through 1. So now when I click this circle right here, or if I hit this or press Command R, I'll actually start the capture process and you will see the audio flow like such. As this is currently running and it tells you on the bottom left how long it's been running for. So this will send our mic audio to pass through one. This audio device will be selectable in applications like OBS, for example, to receive audio input. Um, but if we do it like this, this is just kind of bare bones. It doesn't offer any kind of control. You, you don't really need Audio Hijack to do this kind of thing. The whole purpose of Audio Hijack is to just have a lot more control over what you do. So we're going to add some things here. We're going to go over here to built-in effects, and we're going to put a volume slider. And this is a really simple addition. This thing right here already has its own volume slider. However, if you add this, you don't have to actually click anything to go and see it. It also offers a sort of master volume control. So let's say you add a second audio, uh, audio device, let's say pass through two. You can use a single master volume control for the both of them without having to constantly individually mess with them. So that's one option you can do. Another thing you can do is go over here to Audio Unit Effects, and you can just apply any kind of effect that you want, really. So we're just going to go over and choose, let's see, we'll choose this one, and I'll put it right here. You need to be careful uh, about your audio flow. You don't want this to happen, so make sure you play around with the grid. And this right here, this is uh, allows you to create a noise gate. This will let you filter out unwanted background noise so that your mic audio will sound very clear. Now, if we just go ahead and switch to what I'm currently using, I already have this set up. This is what it looks like when it's in use. You'll see the red is when there's not enough uh, decibels to actually capture any audio. The arrow will go up um, as I'm speaking. And you will really want to play around to find the sweet spot here because this will vary based on your microphone. It's not going to be the same set uh, settings as my microphone. 
So really, you can see the power here. I mean, it's just about arranging these blocks on the grid. You can just choose any kind of effect you want. There's ducking, sync, time shift, all kinds of cool stuff. And you can just arrange them on the grid for your own custom audio flows. You can use a recorder and just put it at the end here. And if you get something like this and you're like, oh, well, get off, get off, really? You could just do something like that, and there you go. By default, it'll show MP3, but I recommend that you just come here and put custom, and then just, I don't know, you could just choose uh, something like FLAC. You'll get lossless audio like that. You can choose to save it to your desktop. This is the file name uh, conventions. This is by default, it'll show the date and time. You can change it if you want. Um, and if you don't want to record, when you're capturing your mic audio, you can just turn that off and leave the block there. So this is a pretty simple way of setting up your mic. Now we're we're gonna leave this here. I normally don't mix different kind of audio capture in the same session. As you can see, I have one session here for my mic and only the mic, but you can option optionally capture something else within the same session. So we're going to do that for a video game, and we're going to send our mic and our game audio to OBS. So let's capture application audio. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that in a moment. Um, first, we're just going to click here and choose the one we want. I'll use Shovel Knight for this example. And let's just go ahead and set this up. I'll put a master volume control slider there and we're going to choose output device now we could choose this pass through one however i'm a big fan of keeping it separate so i'm going to choose pass through two and we'll use pass through two for our game audio and that's really it that's really all you have to do now this right here Currently, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to actually like manually disconnect them. What you can really do is just move this out of the way on the grid, and there you go. So if, if you ever come across that problem, just move it on the grid, and it will detach automatically. Okay, so this is the basic setup. But I'm not going to use this because I already have my own setups for this. So we're just going to go ahead, we'll use this setup right here that I have turned on. And we'll go ahead and use the Shovel Knight setup that I already have. And I'll explain this setup once I have uh, everything running. So I'm just opening OBS here. Okay, I'm going to come to audio and I'm going to add my audio devices here. We'll add pass through one, two, and three. Just verify that they're correct. Okay, and you'll see them over here. Now, when I speak, you can see it actually shows up on two of the um, devices here. And that's actually because of my mic capture here. I'm actually sending my mic to pass through one and two. Normally, I have this this one turned off, but I have this block here specifically for cases like this, like this video. Um, I am actually capturing this video's audio with pass through two. So, as you can see here, you got your three set up and we're only really going to use two for streaming, so you might be wondering why have three? Well, this is really where Audio Hijack shines because it allows you to accomplish things like this with ease. It would otherwise be very daunting, very difficult to accomplish. So, we're going to go ahead and use our Shovel Knight setup here. Let's go ahead and launch the game. Um, however, you can't hear it yet because I'm not capturing the audio. So, there you go. Now, you'll see here on the second device and the third, 
its audio is being captured. One is lower than the other. And here's why we would want to use this, right? So this pass through two, we have it at a lower volume because we don't want the game audio to overpower our voice on the live stream. This one is at 100% volume. This is very good for doing a local recording with the game audio at 100% volume while you are simultaneously live streaming. It's also good for separating your stream audio, your mic and game, and having a separate output for just the game audio so that your local recording does not include your voice. And lastly here we have a volume slider and our output device at my headset. Um, I do it this way because it allows me to control how loud the game audio is for me, for my headset, separately from how loud it is for the stream, and yet still separately how loud it is for a local recording. So you have tremendous control here, and of course to top it off we still have this master control volume slider that will control the audio for everything. We can go like that, and you can actually see the audio thin out here, the orange thins out. Over here it's really thick because it's coming in at full blast, and over here we're lower, we lower the audio, and it's very, uh, very thin now. If I were to move this volume slider up, you would not be able to hear me because it's just way really too loud and it's, it, it's overpowering my voice. Yeah, we don't want that for the stream. <laughs> it's just it's just bad news. So a setup like this is very useful. Um, most people are probably not going to need something like this. However, if you're like me and you have very particular uh, needs, you can just come here into your recording settings. I have it set up to use a particular audio track. So this is audio tra track 3. If we go here to the mixer, you'll see that all the tracks are selected. Our first and second devices are also set to track 3. We want to disable that. So now only the third audio device is set to pipe audio to track 3. And in this way, we can stream live with lower game audio, our microphone, and yet still have 100% volume for our local recording. So that's um, pretty much it. That's how I use this, uh, this software. Um, I've never used anything else that even comes close to this sort of robustness uh, and flexibility. Just the options you have here are just unbelievably strong um, you can even combine this into like I showed earlier you can combine it into the same session if you want I like to keep it separate uh, just to make sure that any kind of issues that I I come across I can troubleshoot it uh, much much more easily um, and it's just it's just easier to keep things separate I can also turn them on and off separately so yeah, that's about it. If you're still confused or you're trying to get a particular setup working, feel free to shoot me any questions you may have. Just post them in the comments. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. I'm not a master of the software by any stretch, but I do know quite a bit. I've been doing this for several years now, so I'm quite familiar with it. So yeah, have a good one, guys.